here in the i button and in description box below you will get the complete playlist of z transform welcome to video, video number 13 and this particular video we are going to see evaluation of inverse z transform by third method that is convolution theorem so in this video we are going to see a technique by which we can evaluate or we can solve the problems based on inverse z transform by using convolution theorem so let us start if inverse z transform of u of z equals to u n and inverse z transform of v of z is v n then the product of u of z and v of z and the inverse z transform that is inverse z transform of u of z into v of z is equals to summation m equal to 0 to n u m minus v n minus m and that is equals to u n convolution of v n okay suppose you have v of z and u of z and we have the inverse z transform of this that is u n and inverse z transform of v, v of z that is v n in that case multiplication of this and we are finding the inverse z transform of that that is inverse z transform of u of z into v of z equals to summation m equals to 0 to n u m minus v n minus m and it is given by u n convolution of v n where this uh, symbol denotes the convolution operation i repeat this is nothing but your convolution operation now we will start solving a very important problem based on convolution theorem basically we are going to solve we are going to uh, evaluate or we can say we are we are going to solve inverse z transform by this convolution theorem so the problem says use convolution theorem to solve this inverse z transform that is z inverse z transform of z is square upon z minus a into z minus b so let us start so here we can say since we know that inverse z transform of z upon z minus a is nothing but your a to the power n and similarly we can say inverse z transform of z upon z minus b is what that is b to the power n if inverse z transform of z upon z minus a is a to the power n on similar grounds we can say inverse z transform of z upon z minus b is equals to b to the power n now if you see this this is nothing but the product of this that is z upon z minus a into z upon z minus b and we are finding the inverse z transform of that so we can say inverse z transform of z square upon z minus a into z minus b that is equals to inverse z transform of we can rewrite this as z upon z minus a into z upon z minus b and this is nothing but a to the power n convolution of b to the power n now we know the formula is summation m equals 0 to n a to the power m into b to the power n minus m okay we have already seen this formula that is summation solving this that is m equals to 0 to n this is as it is that is a to the power m we can rewrite this as b to the power n upon b to the power m this is n and this is m clear now we can rewrite this as summation m equal to 0 to n b to the power n and this is a upon b power n clear now here you can see the value of m goes from 0 to n so this part is constant since we can say the value of m goes from 0 to n we can say that is b to the power n is a constant term so we can write b to the power n summation m equal to 0 to n a upon b power m now we are going to put m equal to 0 then 1 then 2 and so on this is going to be b to the power n 
I'm putting m equal to 0 here. This is a upon b power 0, that is 1. Then, when you put m equal to 1, this is going to be a upon b. Plus, again, if you put m equals to 2 here, this is going to be a square upon b square. In the same way, when you put m equal to n, this is going to be a to the power n upon b to the power n. Clear to? Now, here we can see this is nothing but a GP series where we can say the first term that is a that is equals to 1. Again, we can say the common ratio r, the common ratio is how much? That is a upon b, a upon b. Okay. Now, what is left? That is number of terms, number of number of terms is how much? Here you can see the summation goes from 0 to n. Okay. When the summation goes from 1 to n, in that case the number of terms is n. But in this case the number, the, the value of m goes from 0 to n. So instead of writing number of terms in equals to n, we are going to write n plus 1. Again I am repeating this. If the value of 1, if the value of m goes from 1 to n, if the range is from 1 to n, in that case number of terms is n. But here the range is from 0 to n. So instead of writing n, we are going to write n plus 1. I think this much is clear. Now the sum is given by a into r power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. This is the formula of sum of GP series. Okay, the formula is a to the power a into r to the power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. This is the formula. Now we are going to apply this here. This b to the power n is as it is. Instead of writing this, we are going to write this. What is a? That is 1. So, no need to write this. Start from this. That is r a upon b. a upon b power n. n means n plus 1. n plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 upon r minus 1 that is a upon b minus 1 ok. Now again we can say this is going to be how can we write, write this that is b to power n this is a to power n plus 1 if you take LCM that is b to power n plus 1 here we have a power n plus 1 minus this is going to be b to the power n plus 1 whole upon here again we can write that is a minus b upon b ok. Now closing this bracket again we can rewrite this as b to the power n is as it is this numerator part is as it is a to the power n plus 1 minus b to the power n plus 1 upon we can write b to the power n plus 1 as b to the power n into b whole upon a minus b upon b this is cancelled with this and this b is cancelled with this so we can say this is equals to a to the power n plus 1 minus b to the power n plus 1 whole upon a minus b that is a minus b and this is the final answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.